Ryan Fair. What's happening? Just fall. Yes, indeed. The day before you're playing. Yeah, you're here a day early to steal hate breeds beers, drink Macedon's whiskey, and watch Iron Man. You look the same as you looked 10 years ago. <laughs> How do you well, stay so young? I sold my soul to the devil a long time ago, and you know, he told me I take care of me. And, hey, here we are. <laughs> no, you know, I, I think it's a lot of good herb, a lot of good beers. It's about that. Chess Ball are now so deep in their career that, I mean, some have lost track, other kids have come on board. How does it feel being Thomas Paul in 08? Uh, it's pretty crazy, man. Yeah, it's been over 10 years. Uh, Matt and John started writing songs to Shadow Ball like in you know, the late 90s. Uh, the main core of the band's been together for over a decade. It's pretty crazy. Because uh, before that, we were all in bands for like seven, eight years before that. So none of us thought this was going like two decades, you know. So, but it's been great. It's an amazing run. We're having a good time. Uh, uh, metal has kind of grown as we've grown as a band, so that's been cool. But uh, it's also weird too, because when we started, there was like a few bands in, in America, and much less New England, doing like kind of you know the metal thing. But now it's it's definitely grown to where it's that it's become like just a part of the normal like sort of musical landscape. So it's pretty crazy to see how much has changed. Many people don't know that you came from the hardcore scene. Talk a bit about the experience of growing up in Massachusetts hardcore scene in the '90s. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a pretty strange scene uh, in Boston in the early '90s. I really started going to shows around like 1990, you know, '89, '90, uh, and it was like a lot of uh, kind of the New York crossover bands would come up, Leeway, Pro Mags, and uh, there was a lot of great Boston bands at the time too, like. You know, yeah, only a witness. Uh, you know, Sam Black Church, uh, and just it was kind of a weird time where metal was really mixing with hardcore as well. Where there wasn't a, uh, every show was kind of a, a bunch of bands coming together. You'd have Sick of It All playing with Sepultura, and you know there wasn't like any real division. Uh, and there was also a real melodic sense. You had all these like melodic hardcore bands playing. And what he really wanted to tell you that the Celtics are gay. No, uh, the Celtics beat the who? The Lakers. They already seen it. Oh, uh, see? I, I, I've been crashing. How hard, how hard would it be to have a Lakers tattoo today? I don't uh, know, yeah. We, how much Kobe, you know what was the best part about the, the, the Lakers Celtics series? It was not just the tradition, not just the rivalry. It was the no means no chance that every time Kobe went to the line, that's what made it happen. <laughs> oh, man. You better hope we don't get our test because next year. Oh, next year, my, honestly, you guys are younger, whatever, but don't matter. Hey, you, right now, Paul Pierce, those right other now. assholes. Right now. Right now. Right now, who's right the now. king of the world? All right, Boston. Go, go Giants. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even like him. <laughs> I don't even like him, but it's all I have at this point right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's resorting to low blows. Go Giants. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, my best fuck the whole Manning family, Eli and fucking Peyton. Anyway, three guns ain't got shit to say. I mean, what kind of hardcore values do you still carry on as individual or as a band from the early years? Uh, well, we've always been a DIY band. I mean, the, the, that's what's funny. Even when Shadows Fall was always a metal band, and, and uh, even before I was in the band, but they put out their own first 7-inch, their own first record. They booked their first tours with Overcast and us and Disembodied, you know, and like, like did hardcore shows and always, you know, Matt had his own label and zine. And we just always did things ourselves. So that's always been part of what we do. Even now, like, yeah, we're on, you know, we have a label and management and all that stuff, but we still take care of everything, you know, ourselves. So, and that's something that's, that's more about just loving music, you know, and, and those were the hardcore values. Because if you didn't love it back then, you didn't, you couldn't do it. If you didn't book your own tour, or if you didn't put out your own record, it didn't happen. And that's what a lot of kids don't understand now. It's real easy to put four songs on your MySpace and like jump on a tour. Whereas before, there weren't tours. Touring was like calling five dudes you knew in a certain area and playing their house. You know, like, or if they got lucky, a VFW hall or like some club that was stupid enough to let a hardcore show happen and then never do it again because everyone beat each other up. <laughs> so, you know. A good story or two about hardcore riot you were involved in. Hardcore or, riot? Yeah, or, or something uh, crazy that went down. Yeah, I've, I've seen some crazy stuff. Boston back in the day was was a pretty you know violent, over the top scene. Uh, I've seen some pretty good throwdowns and shows. Uh, I've definitely seen more injuries than I like, unfortunately. But uh, the worst I ever saw was a dude dancing with a with a hammer and just like clocking some dude with the backside, you know, like like the, like the pointy side, and just like 
it did not end well. I don't, I don't even know if that dude made it through. You know, like so there was some hard dancing back in the day, but that's it was just, that's just dull. You know, but uh, the best riot I was ever at was actually a shelter show, which is pretty funny because you don't usually associate Hari Krishna hardcore with with riots. It was in uh, Cambridge, in the East Cambridge Church. It was in the basement, and it was a uh, shelter 108. Shit, I forget who else played. Maybe Worlds Collide and at least three other bands. I forget who. And uh, there was a lot of kids really dancing hard. And uh, Ray was not feeling that at all and, and told everyone, like, finally, just, like, stop moving, stop doing everything. Everyone sit down. These kids wouldn't sit down. Like, a bouncer went over to tell them to sit down. The dude hit the bouncer. Next thing I know, someone just yells from the stage, just yells, get him. Everyone went after this dude. And honestly, as bad as it is, the dudes who were in the wrong were probably five or six kids, and they beat up like an entire club full of Krishna vegan straight edge hardcore kids. You know, like, like, and kind of won, but like it did, it, it ruined hardcore in Boston. Shows wouldn't happen anywhere. No one would book shows. Every club stopped doing it. This was at a church, and it was a full scale police riot. I mean, riot gear, everything, and like, you know, and they they actually had hockey sticks who were unfortunately accidentally accidentally supplied by the guys from this band Dive, who were one of the best hardcore bands from Boston ever, who we were playing street hockey before, and checked them behind the Hare Krishna like vegetarian meal table, you know, and just innocently left hockey sticks there. Unfortunately, they were not used very innocently. So. <laughs> What were some of the moves that happened with those sticks, cross checks? Uh, come on, it was the town of Slapshot, you know. So mm -hmm. there was there was people who knew how to use a hockey stick at a hardcore show in Boston. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it it was it was definitely a crazy crazy time, crazy riot. That was probably the most full scale hardcore riot I've ever been at. So, but any Hapron show looks like a riot. So that's all I got. You know. Overcast finally just announced. Yes, the, over, the long-awaited Overcast record, which I apologize, we recorded it like almost two years ago, and it's been done for a while. But all the bullshit we didn't even think about, the fact that Mike was, you know, in Kill Switch, the fact that I'm in Shadows Fall, we forgot about the whole like you can't put it on a record till this record happens and that happens, and also schedules then fucked it up because Mike's pretty busy. Kill Switch is doing okay, you know, so he's been uh, all around the world. So uh, now we actually all have time at home together. Uh, Seamless is off the road, Shadows Fall is off the road, Kill Switch is going to be stopping to write their new record. So we're going to play some Overcast shows, hopefully finally get that record out. I won't even say definitely because till I have one, I, I don't believe it. <laughs> it's, but it won't be the Chinese democracy of hardcore. It will, it will happen. It will happen. So, and it sounds awesome. I can imagine. What kind of tour stuff is planned? I heard Dissolve and Overcast. Uh, we're going to at least try and do some shows because uh, the guys in Dissolve, I think, are planning on, I don't know if they're planning on writing a new record or just doing some shows, but they were definitely jamming again. And Dissolve is a band from Poughkeepsie, New York, that we kind of came up playing shows with. Back in the day, it was actually just a 14, Dissolve, Overcast shows would happen in Boston, New Haven, and then Poughkeepsie. Like, we'd each play each other's towns, and, and that was some of the best times ever. A bunch of young kids just, you know, playing music that we didn't think would, you know, matter to anyone besides ourselves. It was awesome. So, uh, hopefully, if we ever get to play shows with Dissolve again, like Overcast Dissolve in 2008, that'd be kind of full circle. So, Actually, we'll Dissolve's uh, a second album, Caveman of the Future, is coming out this week. This, so it is coming out. So um, they, they actually, yep, yeah, that's awesome. So I knew, I heard this, something about them recording a new record. That's awesome. It's well, it's the old record. Oh, it, oh, so that's what it is. They're putting out ten years ago. There you go. So they're actually finally putting it out. There you go. That all, now it all makes sense. So the Overcast record, they're old songs, except for well, they're all old songs, but some of them you never heard. That's the difference. Uh, we were we wrote some songs. Shit, I guess now was like. A long time ago, man. <laughs> but uh, and we never recorded them, so we recorded those songs. Plus, we re-recorded a bunch of songs that uh, we'd recorded before, but you know, for like no money when we had no idea what we were doing. So it's nice to kind of hear the songs actually for real. 